Norm Megan. So how do you start this haircut when you're sectioning it? Okay, so the first thing is the focal point of this haircut is bringing her features out. Okay? So very strong fringe and also face framing so I can bring her cheekbone. Okay? And she, she, her hair um, texture is very fine. So I need to create volume and a movement through interior of the haircut. So um, two days ago, we did this beautiful color on her, which lives right underneath. So I really want to expose the color that I have created with the haircut. Okay? So the first thing that I wanted to execute is definitely her fringe. And then gonna go into her face framing and the length and their interior layering. While Sharon's getting ready to do that, Feliciana, if you want to come back over Megan for a little bit, you can see some of the looks. Sharon and I have uh, been on the road. We've been doing some hair for our WOW Leadership Conference at Ratner Companies where we celebrate our top performers in the salon and really introduce inspirations that are a little more fashion forward and our collection, the All-American Mosaic, that's ready to wear for our guests in the salon. But like Sharon said, we're seeing strong fringes. So you can see this whole collection of strong fringes, some really nice square geometric fringes where we've opened the face with some razoring, some really soft organic fringes without straight lines, and then some really nice curved arch fringes. So when we think about what we're doing, it's having a consultation with our guest, calling it out as a consultation, letting them know we're getting to know them, what they really want to do with their hair, what makes them feel empowered as themselves and then as the salon professional we connect them to what's happening and what's current not putting it on like it would be a wig or a costume but making it their own so Sharon what I love is you're really using the head shape to create your sectioning so how do you know where to create that triangular sectioning so the triangle section were determined by the, of, of course her hairline and also her face shape so I took a triangle from the highest point to the middle of her eyebrow. I think that section is very flattering for her face. Okay. So that's going to be the fringe. Okay. And Sharon, while you're cutting that, I think it's one of the things in the consultation, you know, we look at pictures, we talk about the personality that our salon guest wants to convey, but also texture and density. Like if you notice here in the corners of Megan's hair, there isn't as much density. So that's a consideration that you would take and really call out in the consultation. Is my section going to be a little more narrow? And then I'm going to have a, more of an arc silhouette to compensate to bring more hair in. Is it going to be a little square? But making sure that the arch of the brow is really going to be that anchor point. So you can really bring that into the consultation to let the guests know you're making a personalized look for them. Okay. And another, another hot tip is really understanding the growth pattern when you want to create a fringe. Make sure that, you know, um, she doesn't have very strong calyx or different growth pattern. With the Megan's hair, hairline, it's, it's pretty even throughout the whole front. Okay? Nothing is really kicking out. So definitely want to comb it to its natural fall. Okay. <laughs> the elevation that I'm gonna use is, I'm gonna use my finger as a measurement. So I'm putting one finger. I'll determine where do I want this fringe to sit. Definitely want to expose her beautiful eyebrows so I want to go above the eyebrow. Okay. So that is first section using my one finger elevation. I'm using my scissors to cut really clean straight line. Sharon, that really gives you that on purpose fringe. The conversation can really be, do I want short or long bangs? Do I want a short or long fringe? And really it's about touching the eyebrows. If you bring it up above the eyebrows, it really gives you that fashion forward look, but you can still be connected to what's current as long as the fringe is touching the eyebrows. And another hot tip, make sure your guest is nice and relaxed. I know in the salon behind the chair for almost 30 years, I cut lots of fringes that touched 
the eyebrow when my guest was leaning forward in the mirror looking at themselves and then when they leaned back relax their eyebrows I had a whole bunch of daylight above the fringe so you want to make sure that their eyebrows and their facial muscles are nice and relaxed and touching the fringe, the fringe touching the eyebrow is going to feel a little softer and a little bit above. We know Megan likes to be really fashion forward and make a statement. That's going to really make that statement. Let everybody know that she is wearing something super fashionable and current. And I love the fact that um, that I have created this kind of uh, ombre feel with the color, and I really want to expose that color because it is placed underneath. So with my next section, I'm gonna let it fall naturally. And with the next section, still using my one finger elevation because I want this line to be really strong. So I don't wanna to put too much of graduation. It's nice and clean cut. So hey guys, I'm backstage here with these fine people and I love all the comments. You guys, if you have questions, please um, shoot them out because I'm calling them out for Sharon and Steve to answer on live, okay? Yeah, we know it takes a village. We're really blessed here at Ratner Companies. Sharon and myself are here. We have Feliciano behind the, cap the camera who is our social media guru. We have Valerie who is really the steward of all of our salon professionals. She's, she's a road warrior on the road. She's here at the Resource Center. She makes sure that all of the salon professionals have a voice in everything that we do. So anything that you want to know, any questions you have, any comments or just a shout out, just let us know in the comments below. Yeah, we've got lots of people on right now. Tamara, we've got Janice, we've got Anakin, Denise, Tammy. Well, you know, and I, I know in the comments we saw at ratnerco.com slash careers, there's a great opportunity because I know Sharon, um, you've been with the Ratner Company for what, about 15 minutes, a couple of days. <laughs> How long have you been here with the Ratner Company? So I've been with the Ratner Company for 20 years. I started at year 2000 in July. Um, so this July will be my 20th year. And I mean, it seems like yesterday. And you know, I, I never feel like that. I have to get up in the morning and you know, am I going to work? You know, it doesn't feel like I'm going to work. Every day is yeah. different, it, it's fun. Yeah. Um, I love the fact that, you know, I went through so many different career change with this company. I started out as behind the chair full time, then got opportunity to become a salon leader. And then I did multi school leader and then got into education, which I really, really love. And it put all those roles together. So, you know, when you think about being a salon leader, being behind the chair, making it happen, and now in education, you're really, uh, what I love is you're keeping it simple, but you're pre-sectioning what's happening on yes. the sides. Tell us a little bit about what's happening there on the sides of the haircut. The side of the haircut. So I'm still taking from the top of the head. The first the fringe was the triangle, right? and then taking another triangle to the highest point on her forehead. And the next one is to her cheek, the, the, the temple. And the next one is to right behind the ear. So as you can see, the elevation is pretty relaxed. I don't wanna give too much of elevation at this point because her hair being very fine, I want this line to be really strong. So we understand that lower the elevation is stronger shape higher the elevation is gonna be softer so i'm using my razor this point okay. so my finger grip is pretty sturdy okay. and i'm going in i'm gonna feel my bite okay gonna make my razor just give me a very clean So I have a question from Lisa out in Maryland. Do you find her head placement or your own body position is the most important to keep the same, to keep the same lines? So both is very important. Your guest head position and your body position is very, very important. As you can see, I, my body position is not in correct position at this moment because I'm in front of the camera. 
But if I am actually cutting this, I should be in front of my desk. And for those of you that didn't hear, the question was, the guest head position and as a salon professional, our body position is that important? And we all have that guest in the salon that says, my hair looks great today, it'll never look like that again. I wish you could be in my bathroom every morning styling my hair. And what they're letting us know is we're not cutting enough style into the hair. For us to cut the style into the hair, the guest has to be in the position where they're gonna wear their hair. If we're working on angles, diagonal lines, and the guest is not in a natural position, all those lines change as they come up into their natural resting position. And when we have a vision in our head or a vision from a photograph as an inspiration, and we're trying to create that, those lines in our body position doesn't mimic those lines, we're losing all the control as a salon professional. So we wanna make sure the head position and our body position are really mimicking those lines. And then with the razor, we're carving the style into the hair. So the styling aids, the home hair care that she chooses, is just gonna really coax what's already there into place and she's gonna be able to wear it all day and have mm -hmm. it look great with lots of versatility. Okay, so I have finished one side. You see the razor gave me very soft, diffuse line, but still maintaining the shape. And Sharon, what I love is, even when we're doing these fashion forward shapes and we talked about it earlier, you're using the bone structure of the face, we're using the arch of the eyebrow, we're using the cheekbone, we're creating still beautiful, flattering images that can still be as current and fashion forward and runway, runway ready as we need them to be to really capture what our guest's intention is with, with their style. So as you can see, my stroke with my razor is very, what do you call this? Short stroke. Short, yeah. Yeah, short stroke. Okay. So it's it gives me better control. Well, and when Sh Sharon, what I love about what you're doing is, I, and I think it's unique the way you hold your razor. Some of us see people cutting hair like they're pulling the arm on a slot machine. And I think that is gambling. I think when mm -hmm. we cut with a razor like this, we don't know what we're gonna get and every once in a while we get lucky. You're doing it really purposeful in those movements and you, you're holding your razor like you would hold another tool that you would use. So yes. what's your inspiration for holding your razor? So, you know, I have art background and I like to draw and paint. So when I discovered this amazing tool, razor, okay, and I, at the beginning, I really didn't know how to use it. Okay, and I was using my wrist to carve or give the shape and it never was consistent. Um, so I say, okay, razor is a tool with the one blade, okay? So why don't I use this as if I am drawing or carving and hold it like I was holding a brush or a pen and use my finger to control the blade instead of my wrist. So that's how I discover use fingers to really control so I can do the detail work. And before you start cutting again, if you can see that Felicia, if you pull back a little bit, we talked about body position and establishing mm -hmm. the lines. So Sharon's arm all the way up to her wrist stays strong to really allow her to control the lines that she's creating. And then her finger allows to create texture because the biggest complaint about cutting with a razor is you lose all the strength. You cut with scissors when you want strength and when you cut with a razor when you just want softness and something that's deconstructed and abstract. Cutting this with discipline the way Sharon is allows you to get the movement of a razor without losing the discipline or the strength of the shape that you're creating. And that goes right into the question I just got from Cheryl. Do you find using a razor to be easier with this fringe rather than using shears and slicing them? So you kind of answered that, right? Yeah. I, once you really are able to connect the vision that you have in your head through your fingers, the great thing about using a razor is it's not complicated because with a razor, you see the shape you want and like Sharon said, you just carve it away where it lives. She's using no over direction, no elevation. She's really just carving it where it lives. Sometimes when we think of classic uh, shear cutting, there's lots of sectioning, subsectioning, elevation, and graduation. We're creating lines away from where it's going to live. So with these modern shapes that I want to see texture in, and I know Sharon does as well, it can be less complicated. I hate to use the word easy because it takes experience, it takes discipline, it takes vision, but it can be less complicated to use a razor, I will say that. Okay, so I have created her fringe with the scissors and then the face framing. So now I'm going in and create the length, which is our perimeter shape, okay? I picked up my scissor again, okay? 
I'm going in, the elevation is low, I'm gonna go in and just deep point cut to make the line a little bit softer. So I see Sarah Lyons Vega, Vega is on there. Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying it. I hope these are techniques that you're going to take back to the salon. I know you will. What I love now as Sharon's working in here, we're thinking about these shapes that are inspired by bi-levels, shags, and mullets that are short in the front and long in the back. And if we made the color very dense and heavy at the back, it would exaggerate the length in the back and the disconnection. So if you notice on Megan's hair that has, that's fine in individual texture, we melt it into this lighter shape. So inside the shape, there's this nice shadow that stays strong on the roundness of the head shape. And then the hair gets light with lots of movement. So Sharon's creating movement in the texture here. There's movement in the color. So it doesn't look like she has, like, sometimes it almost looks like a wig with hair extension stuff on the back. Right. Or I think I've seen that. That woman like waited in front of me at the grocery store once or twice. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had a razor in my pocket because it's just a little bit of texture that could take it to the next level. But think about color. Think about cutting techniques, whether it's shear point cutting with your shears, whether it's razoring. If you want to have these differences in disconnection of lengths, how can we still keep it soft and feminine and modern? Because I almost think of a Sharon when you're using a techni technique like this, it's almost like two pieces of fabric and these techniques are stitching them together with a needle and thread. Right. We still want a connection, we still want a flow, we still want it to make sense, but we still want it to make a statement at the same time. So it is still shattered, but maintaining that strong shape because her hair is fine. Okay. So now we need to create this interior layering, which will give um, lift and also a movement through interior of her hair. Well, I guess I have to read all comments. Yes. So Terry Williams in Florida just asked, do you think Valerie Thibodeau would look good with this cut with all her curls? Well, I, if you, if, do you mind coming on camera for a second, Valerie? <laughs> I, think, I think if, sure. if Valerie could come on camera for a second, Valerie being very fashion forward, we have a guest with these beautiful natural curls. <clears throat> if you notice, there's still a fringe. They're still face framing. We wanted to make sure that you can see your cheekbone. Like it's all purposeful and makes sense. So Valerie's still connected to, if you think about the outside silhouette, fringe and shape, face framing, but at the same time, it's your own. Okay. It it. I'll really consider nice. it. Thanks, Terry. So Sharon, tell okay. us a little bit about your elevation, what you're doing there. Yes. So with this haircut, I want her shortest piece, the hair, right here. So the shortest piece being here, they will, this will give the maximum lift and it will give maximum movement through here. So I'm taking my center guy on top of her head. So my guy is about one inch. My angle because back the crown of her hair is the shortest point so my angle is about 45. Okay. So I can see this is my guy from my side so I don't want to lose that. I want to go in and deep point cut. That's my guy. Okay. And also I want top of her head to be the shortest part. So I'm bringing my next, section, my next section to my guide, which will create short to long. As you pull that up, Sharon, what I love is we're using a razor, we're using shear point cutting, we're creating all this softness, and lots of softness was created in the color as well. It's all about the tools that you choose, and I know this was a really uncomplicated coloring technique where we did some freehand painting to pre-lighten sections before we got creative with our toning, but one of the things, you know, we're so excited to have you join us today. For three lucky winners, we have this Redken Balayage Freehand Painting Kit, 
with various painting tools to allow you to use uh, the tools for different techniques when you're applying your color formulas, whether it's your lightener in a soft transition, whether it's saturation that you're gonna have, um, obviously your clips, so you can maintain control of your sections and subsections, and then your two balayage boards. You have one that you can really saturate large panels of hair, and then you have a smaller one where you really, especially when we detail around the face, you can create detail. So Redken, our partner in our hair cuttery salons with our color and our styling, they've done a great job to donate these for us. So for three lucky winners, share, like, and stay with us till the end, and we'll pick three lucky winners to each take one of these balayage kits home with them. So I'm going to continue the same technique on the other side. Only thing that has not changed is my body position. So I'm right-handed. So I'm standing on Megan's left. So her right side, I'm pulling everything to my guide. On her left, I'm pushing everything to my guide. And this way, my shape will be consistent. Okay, I'm going to let you cut this section and then we're just going to turn you and Megan just a little bit because we want to see mm -hmm. this in profile to really be able to see the angles that we're creating. I'm glad so many guys are loving this cut. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for watching and sticking with us. And Sharon, I think one of the things that we really want to talk about is most of the time when our guests get bored and they feel like they need to leave a salon professional or leave a salon, it's because they're getting tired, they're getting bored, and they don't think their salon professional wants to take that journey with them um, as the salon guest when they want to try something new. So when you're talking to your guests and you want to recommend a cut like this for them, what are some of the things you talk about in a consultation? I think what I see in the salon is we have this guest comes in and they love their length, but you know, they want to change it up. But you know, we have done so many different types of layering and you know, what is next? Okay. So, um, you know, the shack's shape is really, really trendy and you know, the, um, the fashion color, fashion four color is very trendy, but um, make to make it salon friendly, you know, I chose the tone that is a little bit more muted, okay? So it's a little bit more guest friendly. So we know with fashion colors, one of the biggest challenges is hair color fading. And even if our guest wants to wear something that's really bold, they're afraid that it's not going to last or the upkeep is going to be too much. So one of the things that we're doing is our approach to fashion colors, instead of using clear to create softer tones, because it already sometimes with clear can have a tendency to look like it's faded the day of the salon visit, we're using Pulp Riot color and we're using our tones like we're using jam and candy. But instead of mixing it with clear to soften the vibrancy, we're using mercury and smoke and it gives it more of an antique, the burnish style, just maybe an inch into our formula, will take the edge off. I call it taking the teeth out. Right. And it makes it look a little more modern, a little more evolved. Like, you want to use words like patina, antiqued, but it just, sometimes we don't always want to go right to clear. We can really get creative in the way we just soften those tones for our guests. And we always think we have to pre-lighten hair to level 10 before we put fashion colors on, no matter what they are. And we know if we want to see some soft warmth, even with these, even like a rosy gold tone in here, leaving a little bit of pale, this copper, natural underlying pigment, and then putting a tone like jam over top, it really allows us to get these modern tones, even when they're softened a little bit with some smoke or mercury. Um, it's one of the things I love about using the yellows, about using lemon. Mm -hmm. You can make lemon a really interesting color by using a little bit of smoke or mercury mixed into your formula. So I just got another question from Terry. How often does hair cuttery have trendy classes? Well, Terry, you're in luck because we always create we don't think of our collections as trends that are seasonal. We don't put dates on them and we don't want to make them dated and we always ground them in real technical content. So the collection that we did um, last year we called Rhyme and Reason and we had a look called Prime and Refine and we know that 
double toning looks, doing tones, especially in corals that are, are very popular, um, needed to have a first pre-toned step and then another tone. So we always have those collection classes offered. And now our new collection that's launching the first week of March is called All American Mosaic. It's really a celebration of what's current, but the individual look and empowerment of every single guest. Our look splash of color um, is our first class offering, which gives you a haircut very similar to this, it utilizes shears, it utilizes a razor, it gives you a very current fashion forward silhouette. And then our splash of color technique gives us bold, bright color in just five sections that's uncomplicated and strategically placed to give you versatility for the guest. Those are offered all the way through. You know, we're on a rotating um, calendar with all of our classes. So we have our foundational core classes that are still connected to what's current. But we're also the long answer to a short question, we're always offering trendy classes. Okay, so what I am doing right now is I have created that, that um, short to long shape on the top. Okay. And so that created kind of a um, square shape through here. And I'm blending that layering to my length. So I'm taking radial sections from highest point of the head, bringing everything 90, okay, from my layers to my length, I am connecting this with my razor, with just very soft stroke. So as you can see, that really opened up the color placement that I have created, is creating the short pieces and it's really enhancing her natural wave pattern and that's my goal and Sharon you know what I love we were talking about trendy classes and and all the opportunities that we have like your journey starting as a salon professional into salon leadership um, being an artistic lead going with teams taking teams of salon professionals to fashion week so we're not just looking at magazines to get our inspiration we're partnering with the designers on the runways and bringing that to create our collections so we can be a primary resource for our salon guests and then in the education that we develop we want to make sure that there's a it's always technically sound, it's driven by foundation, but it always includes how are we going to communicate with our guests. You know, at the Ratner companies, whether it's at our bubble salons, our salon, salon Cielo, haircuttery, um, we want to make sure that we're connecting. You know, we want, we want to do incredibly fashion forward current haircuts. You know, we're going to be famous for hair color, but we're going to connect with our guests, and that's what it's really about. So our education um, is about connecting. There's got to be a why and a purpose to everything that we do right. so you know there's so many talented hairdressers out there sometimes we f can feel a little disconnected from our culture as a whole from uh, a culture of talented salon professionals that inspire us every day so if you're interested we would love to have you as part of our team if you go to ratnerco.com slash careers you can see all the opportunities that are available to be part of our team um, the kill it behind the chair um, just to connect with guests every day, opportunities in education, opportunities in leadership. You know, what I love is you sometimes, especially when you're in cosmetology school, you can't see the forest for the trees and you don't know what is this license going to mean when it comes in the mail or when we get that license. It's really an unlimited passport to wherever you want to go. And um, that, especially with the Ratner companies, is here to support you and wherever that journey wants, you want that journey to take you. So guys, I have another question from Shelly in New Jersey. Is Sharon just using the razor on the back layers? What about the front layers? So, oh, the, I mean the side panel, mm -hmm. okay. So side panel, I have already created the layering technique. Remember, I took the center guy and brought everything to my guy. So I have already created the layering on the side so I don't need to go in to my side panel. So Shelly that was a great question and just to reinforce mm -hmm. what Sharon just said we you think about Megan's hair is individually fine in its texture and it's not as dense on the sides there's not as much of it mm -hmm. so Sharon over directed everything to the top and cut it here so there isn't as much like straight at a 90 degree elevation to the side the way we normally would think about doing this because then we would lose too much of this balance of the shape then in the back, because we have more hair, it's more dense, even though it's still fine, Sharon was taken out at 90 degrees. So all the layering happened up here in front of the ears, and all the layering happened back here behind the ears. Great question, Shelly. Thanks for paying attention. And I have another one from uh -huh. Tara. 
It says, I saw you use Frizz Slayer to prep dry hair for the razor at WOW. Did you use any products to prep the hair today? Today, all I did was um, I shampooed her hair with uh, CBD. Who loves the CBD moisture shampoo and conditioner? Um, so give that the foundational, the moisture into her hair. And all I did was just spray Nasonati, which is our uh, lip and moisturizing uh, prep, cutting prep tool or detangler. That's all I used on her hair. Well, and Sharon, you know, we have so many people, not just um, in our Ratner culture, Cebu is the hair product line that we have as proprietary to the Ratner company. So we really, it is the salon professionals brand. You know, we test it, we develop it, and we have it for our salon professionals. It really gives us the tools to create the hair in the salons and for our guests to recreate it at home. Okay. And Sharon, I know one of the things that I'd like to do is welcome everybody who's joined us not from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a little bit of FOMO. I know if I was scrolling through and I saw this amazing look and I didn't know how we got from point A to here, I'd feel like I missed out. Mm -hmm. So do you want to do just one more, just a little brief review of how we got started and how we wound sure. up here? Okay. So first thing that we did was took a triangle section from high point of her head to about middle of her eyebrow to create that fringe. And I use my one finger elevation, divide that into half and create a one finger elevation and give this awesome fringe on Megan. From there, took another triangle to her temple and then another triangle to her cheekbone, another triangle to behind the ear, and kept that elevation very low, and I used my razor, keep it very low, and soft, short strokes, and create that, the side. Then we went in, and with the scissors, created our perimeter shape with a deep point cutting. And then I took center guide from top of her head, brought everything and create the shape, short to long, because I want the maximum volume, maximum movement through her crown area. And then from there I took guide each section to my center guy, brought everything up, so it created another short to long shape. Let me see, I don't think you see that. Mm -hmm. So her shape is this, this, and this. Took everything to the center, so created a short to long. And then in the back, pivoting from the high point to everything, straight out 90 and use my razor and blend from that layer to my length with the short strokes with my razor. And Sharon, what I love is we talked once again, you're holding your razor like a pen or a pencil. You're using your finger and not your wrist. Mm -hmm. So your body position can maintain all that. And I love, you can even see as Megan's hair is drying, people worry about razor cutting looking frizzy. We know we prep the hair with our Cebu, our Ratner Company Cebu shampoo that has CBD oil for softness without weighing the hair down. I saw salon leader Tracy Tartaglia mm -hmm. uh, using it and loving it. We mm -hmm. love that you guys love Cebu. We love that you guys love the CBD. But what I love is you need moisture in the hair to have texture. I'm sure Megan would tell us, Megan, when your hair is dry, I'm sure it just hangs and it's limp. Mm -hmm. And then people say, oh, my hair is dry. Then you use too heavy of a conditioner and it's flat because it, it looks like somebody combed your hair with a pork mm -hmm. chop. It's all oily and greasy and flat. So we gotta find the right way to do it. And what I love is CBD does that. It really gives you the right amount of moisture to activate the bonds in your hair that um, gives it its undulation, the movement of the texture and curl. Uh, great job. And it, you know, it really shows off that color that you did, Sharon. Yeah. So now I'm going in and looking at her shape and I wanna create some openings because I really want to expose that that color underneath. Okay. I love the continuity and tone too because of the, this beautiful um, softened pink. We use some mercury and some smoke to soften this tone. It really matches the coolness in her lip right. shade. It's a total look. I don't know if that that might have been a happy accident, mm -hmm. but I think it works. I love it. It's a great opportunity to have another conversation with your guest. You know. 
when your guest wants something new and you don't know where to start, look at the cosmetics they're wearing. And obviously, even if it was subconscious, that's what they're choosing and it gives you a place to start a conversation. So with my razor, okay, first thing I want to go in about 45 so I can really feel the hair biting my razor. And then my razor go perpendicular to the floor so I can really carve that C shape. So somebody joined just late. Mona asked, why use two different tools instead of just using your shears all over? Couldn't you just get the same look by just using your shears? Just joined us. Sharon, I'll answer that question yes. because, you know, I love to use both tools. And Mona, thank you for that. I think it's really important to have ownership of our tools and knowing the why. So Mona, when you think about a shear, the way a shear cuts the hair, the shear cuts hair to a strong, solid, blunt point. That is a great opportunity where we really need to see strength on a guest in the salon like Megan that has individually fine hair strands. But sometimes in a cut like this, if we cut everything really strong, you can see where every cut mark was made. So if you look with a magnifying glass uh, at hair that's been cut with a razor, Sharon goes in at a 45 degree angle, she feels the bite and then she cuts it. The end of the hair is cut to a wispy point that is still nice and strong. It's not fuzzy, it doesn't look dry and fly away, but it gives you movement and it softens all the lines that would have been created with a shear. So I choose my shear when I want to see the strength, and I choose my razor when I want to see maximum movement. And then there's, you know, sometimes we talked about it, like a needle and thread, um, putting panels of hair together. Great question, Mona, thank you. Yeah, and I feel like when you're using razor, um, think about it if you're sculpting. Um, I can go in and really sculpt the areas that I want to expose. Well, and what I loved about what you did is you really showed how you're carving away the shape to really expose the color. Mm -hmm. You freehand painted and pre-lightened some of these sections. Mm -hmm. They got really creative. We talked about using our smoke and our mercury to soften our tones. But for you guys that just joined us, um, we're gonna pick three lucky winners for the guys that are liking and sharing and staying till the end. We're gonna get this great red can balayage kit. It has longer bristle brushes that are a little softer to allow you to paint surface areas. It has really stronger short bristle brushes to get in there and really saturate the hair. Um, some arced brushes with a diagonal line to create detailing. Um, I love these big mascara wands. Oh really my God, those are my favorite. Yes, yeah. those are my favorite. And then when you think about it, there are times when we want to use a small board to get into those angles around the face. It's the difference between using a short bladed shear and a long bladed shear. The width of our balayage panels are the same way. Sometimes we want these really bold panels of color. We want to saturate it. We want to work effectively and efficiently and not take a lot of time. And then sometimes we want to detail. This great gift uh, donated by Redkin, $75 value for three winners that stick with us to the end and take this journey. We so thank you for your enthusiasm, your comments, taking some time out of your day to join us to see this haircut come to life on Megan. I'm really liking how her natural texture is coming through. I'm really exposing the color that we have created. And I mean, you know, she doesn't have any styling product in her hair at this moment. Just like Steve said earlier, you know, those of you who are afraid to use a razor, they're creating the frizziness. Her hair feels really good and there is, I mean, the, the lines are really, if you can see, there is no tear in her hair because I use a fresh blade and also, you know, the hot tip is, anytime you use a razor, you have to go in 45 and really feel that bite and so you can make a really clean line. That's such a great yeah. point, Sharon. If you don't feel the bite of the razor, you're mm -hmm. just scraping it along the cuticle and you're just making the hair fuzzy. And we know that a lot of salon professionals haven't had the right education. You know, one of the great things about the Ratner companies here is our education that we have for everybody from the foundational classes that we start our journey with and our smart start. We won't jump you behind the chair if you don't have a lot of experience. We know it can be very anxiety producing and that can make our guest anxious. Mm -hmm. So we can start with foundational education all the way up. But when you're just scraping that razor along, we'll have some guests who've had a bad experience. We're gonna have to reintroduce them to the razor. We're gonna have to really build their confidence. And you talk about 
holding it at a 45 degree angle, talk about why we want to use it so we can really not see where all the scissor marks were made. Right. It cuts the style, the razor cuts the style into the hair, it takes less time to style mm -hmm. um, for the guest at home. You give them the value, you give them the why, and it keeps us inspired as salon professionals, it makes all the difference. Okay, so I'm gonna put some little bit of a styling product. Um, this is one of my favorite. It's high density volumizing cream. What I love about cream based product for curly hair or wavy hair is it really puts that moisture back into the hair. Guys, I see you're loving this look. I see Mickey Price is loving the way the fringe turned out. I think that combination of the color and the cut that Sharon just did is amazing. Um, not choosing, what I love about these colors are they aren't as in your face. They're a little soft and they're a little burnished. They're not gonna look like they're faded in a couple days. They're gonna wear well with the hair because there's so much organic shape to this. We really used Megan's natural wave as an right. inspiration. You can even see in the placement of the color. The color in the fringe when she turns back around works really well, but I know Brett Tyler, I'm glad you're enjoying it as well. I'm glad you guys were able to take this journey. Um, April Grow, I know that color, especially with that brunette, sometimes we think that we can't have fashion colors live against a brunette base. And you can see with Megan's hair especially, um, it makes it even more fashion forward. It looks really just, just elegant and evolved. Fashion colors can be young and fun, and they can also be very elegant and uh, runway ready. And you can see Sharon cut the style into the hair. So the high density, the volumizing cream, it just polishes her hair texture. So Holly Carnes uh, loves the color combination. Holly, we love it too. Um, when you think about it, sometimes we, I, I just am partial to yellow. I think yellow makes everything great. I know you're wearing some pale yellow right. tones in your hair, Sharon, but thinking about that pink and that yellow, they're both cool without being severe. You know, when you think about yellow can skew sometimes golden and warm, and then it can be pale and have this, you know, cool tone that can live in a palette with pinks, with brunettes, and I think it gives us this soft, burnished look. And what I love is it's not gonna feel faded because we softened, softened it all. We talked about taking the teeth of it out with mercury and smoke, mm -hmm. using something that's a little silvery, a little gray, to make it not so in your face, but still be really fashion forward and elegant. And I just think that when your guests are used to seeing tones and combinations together using a pink and a yellow in the same palette with a brunette it's so flattering and at the same time it's so fresh and i love the fact that you know that square shape which is so modern it's effortless i don't know megan i think all you need now is a guitar you're ready to go on tour with this mm -hmm. haircut you're making me want to join a band mm -hmm. We have many fans are writing in that you look fabulous. You look like you could relate to Caitlin Ford. You were meant for this <laughs> cut and color combo. Rockstar. Also, hello to Linda from Michigan. Thanks for watching. Yeah, Linda, thank you for keeping the razor alive in the salons. I love that you're loving your razor cuts. And Sharon, one of the things that mm -hmm. I'd love to do, you know, Megan looks incredible here, but if we just look at these heads behind her, the foundation of every one of these looks was created with this technique. Yes. So when you think about, um, it, and really I would love to, to show them all, strong fringes. This one we took the length off so it's not as severe and we created more texture here. This is the, the look in its purest form from our All-American Mosaic collection that you can see the exact way we cut Megan's hair. It just, this is nice and smooth to give you all that versatility. Then you have the guests that want a stronger, sexier fringe. It's a little more mysterious. I know Sharon, this is one of your favorites. How did you style this? So this mannequin has natural wave. So all I did was just enhance her wave just like how I did with the uh, Megan. But I, you know, what I went was, um, if you can give me my curling iron. Okay. I love like enhancing, you know, our guest natural texture. So all I did was just grab section of the hair and just wrap my curling iron. 
leaving the ends out. Well, and that's what I love about that look, Sharon. It brings, you can have the short fringe in this mm -hmm. length, and we don't think sometimes of putting curl in the fringe because we're afraid it's gonna not lay down, right. it's not gonna look right, but now you have this continuity with the whole shape, and that really gives you that modern rocker look. It allows a fringe to work on those yes. shapes. So the difference between this and this is, you see the fringe is very, very strong, and it almost went to her side panel. That's why I love this yeah. uh, haircut. And what I love about mm -hmm. this one is you took the fringe a little more narrow and started in arc shape. Yes. And it once again, that arc lives lower across the, I call it the eyelash. It's a little more fashion forward. It definitely is a statement, but you still, we still use the bone structure. So you come across the, the eyelashes and then just the apple of the cheek carves that out and has that come straight down. So we're mm -hmm. seeing roundness and then strong geometry that comes through at the end. And then we talked about this great one here where we just really took it fashion forward and then used our technique called splash of color where we work around the roundness of the head shape. We put some tones underneath so the color pops out. So even on individually fine hair strands, it creates the illusion of individually thicker mm -hmm. hair and it shows off the texture that that razor is creating to really give you that interest and take some classic inspirations and make them modern. So guys, I have one more question. Brett Tyler asked, would she be able to wear this look smooth as well as being cut to her texture? Yes. So as you can see, it's, Megan's haircut is actually exactly the same technique. Exact same haircut. So Sharon, we brought, created our face framing. We left it a little longer. Mm -hmm. All the layers in front of the ear were brought up to the top. Yes. And then all the layers in the back were brought straight out at 90 degrees mm -hmm. because what we're really doing is leaving the roundness of the head shape, but then creating the illusion of strong geometry in a silhouette. As you can see in the back, see her layers are pretty short compared to her length, right? That's what so a razor can do for you. Right. So imagine what kind of movement this can create. And then what I love about Megan's hair that we did is for those, suppose the guys that came in late, I know this took forever to style. How long do you think it took you to put this style into her hair? Like what? 90, 10 seconds? 10 seconds. <laughs> 10 seconds. I mean, you know, th that's why I love, you know, um, catering to our modern clients. Um, you know, who really has so much time in the morning to really get ready? You know, and we really want to uh, enhance their lifestyle. So work with what you have. They have wavy, they have curly hair. You know, work with what you got and just enhance it. So guys, thank you so much for taking this journey with us. Sharon, I know that um, we love to have young, enthusiastic, passionate salon professionals that have purpose because we want to work with you to prosper. We have so many opportunities uh, for careers. You can go to Ratner Co dot com slash careers to see all of the opportunities from salon professional to leadership to education we talked about the 20-year journey you took it's you've had every role yes. but in our company we're not just looking at the magazines we're not looking at Pinterest we're not looking online of course they're a resource but we're sending teams of salon professionals with our leadership to Fashion Week our Ratner Co company sends those um, teams there to get first-hand inspiration to come back put together collections we have our All-American Mosaic Collection. It's really celebrating the individuality of each one of our salon guests. Um, just more than anything, I think it's remembering to connect with the guests, build those relationships. We're, we're really in an industry and in a culture of connections and relationships, and we're fortunate enough to get to do hair and create art. Right, okay. And education is the key to your success, really. You know, me and Steve, I mean, we're constantly, you know, um, looking for resource to really learn more and um, you know share everything that we know okay and I learn from you know everyone uh, out in the field and your feedback is greatly appreciated and um, you know be, be, be open to new things okay? and with the haircuts like this, which is modern, uh, you could say shag, mullet, you know, we're thinking, you know, none of my guests were, you know, go for things like this, but you can modify by length and also texture. So have fun, guys, okay? It's all about having fun. Right, it's all about having fun. Thank you so much. On behalf of Valerie, on behalf of Feliciano, Sharon, I'm always inspired by you. Megan, thank you for taking this journey with us. Thank you to all of you. We can't wait to see you 
um, in the digital world or on Facebook. We can't wait to see you in one of our salons at one of our educational events. Please keep having fun, keep posting your beautiful work, and stay tuned right here. You're going to see the list of the three winners of our Redkin Balayage kits. Thank you for taking this journey. Have an amazing day and an amazing career.